capital city of Qatar, Doha, on the eastern coast in the Persian Gulf. Beautiful setting and the first time ever the World Gymnastics Championships taking place in this city. Our chance to see the greatest in the sport. Simone Biles try to lead the U.S. women's team to another team title. NBC Sports presents the World Gymnastics Championships. The 48th edition, and it takes place inside the Aspire Zone in Doha Sports City. Getting ready for the action today, the women's team final, Terry Gannon, along with Tim Daggett and Nastia Lukin. And yes, the U.S. has been absolutely dominant lately. They have won every team title in the women's event since 2011, the World Championships and the Olympics as well. And they are the heavy favorites going into this women's team final as they get set and our action over the next couple of hours. And Simone Biles coming in. Expectations? Well, she didn't expect this. This was the tweet the other night. Nothing like a late-night ER visit less than 24 hours before the World Championships. This kidney stone can wait. Doing it for my team. And guys, been sensational so far in the qualifying. She really has, and I actually got a chance to talk to her yesterday, and she said, you know, I'm feeling all right. Managing the pain, trying to keep it steady, so that's good. <laughs> I mean, you go through a little bit of everything in your career. You didn't expect to go through this. No, and if you take that into account and the way she competed in day one of of these team finals it was like we we all thought we saw the greatest of all time in rio and and we did at that point in time but she is so much better now it's crazy and obviously leading the way but getting help as well from her teammates in doha so some of the highlights from the qualifying you're looking at the world all around reigning champion morgan hurt but setting the table so well so far he yeah, first out of the blocks on the first event, and then she did it again on balance beam. So critical to get a good start for Team USA, and she was an absolute rock throughout the competition. You know, she was great, of course, last year when she won that all-around title at the World Championships, but even better this year as Simone Biles is, Tim, as you mentioned. That was really her only mistake of the entire competition, competed in Rio at the Olympic Games. We we all know how that went. <laughs> Took the year off, and now she is back better than ever, not only in her gymnastics, the level of difficulty, but also the way that she performs the skill. Brand new dismount right there, no problem. Unbelievable, and she qualified first on the all-around, and on three different events, she's the number one qualifier. Bars, which has been her nemesis, she also qualified in the second position, but once again, we have Morgan, who set the table and did a great job. Couple of little tiny wobbles, but really solid start for Team USA on the balance beam. And first world championships for Riley McCusker. Just absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, she had a major mistake coming up right here on her, her three element series. She'll do three skills in a row and just couldn't quite stay on the beam but she'll have another chance today yeah she's actually finals. going today which surprised a lot of people and the coordinator tom forrester said that she can do the job this is kara eaker she was phenomenal in the qualification as well we'll see her not only today but in the apparatus finals and has a legitimate shot of getting to the podium but of course <laughs> You know, I, I feel like I've already said this once, but we are running out of words to say yeah. about Simone because it truly is absolutely spectacular. Everything she does, she makes everything look so easy. And I'm telling you, the skills that she's doing, they're not easy by any means. This skill right here, brand new for her, double twisting, double layout. Not many people in the world can do it. Nobody can do it as easy as she makes it look. Athletes talk about getting to a certain level and the challenge of staying there. Well, she's not just staying there. No, she she's is. She's taking it to a higher level. A, a much higher, as you can see her soar on that skill that's called a Biles. And believe it or not, she's got two of them now. This was, as we said, day one qualification. That skill now named after her as well. So eight teams qualifying for this women's team final. Look at the lead for the United States. The difference between the U.S. and Russia is almost nine points is more than twice the difference between second place and eighth place. It, it, unbelievable. 
It, I mean, the USA right now is so far ahead of the rest of the world. They would be even without Simone Biles. But when you add her to the mix, it's astounding. Believe it or not, she accounted for more than six points of <laughs> of uh, results alone for Team USA. So they are thankful for having <laughs> Simone Biles. They should be. <laughs> a veteran of the World Championships, but she talked about the one unexpected event so far in Doha. We had to go to the ER because I've been having stomach pains like on my right side for two days and then we started to think it was my appendix so we just wanted to go as a precautionary and then we got tests done just to see what it was and then they found a kidney stone. The adrenaline definitely helped because even when I'm, when I'm walking or doing some stretches like I'm, I'm in a bit of pain so adrenaline helps. So competing through the pain and um, doing it at a level that no one else has been or seen. So the U.S. team out there and getting ready. They'll be together with Russia starting the vault. So the women's team final today. Coverage of the action in Doha straight ahead for the next couple of hours. Looking for yet another gold medal. Fans getting set as well as the teams here for the women's team's team final. Doha Cutter, the site, the World Gymnastics Championships. Terry Gannon, Nastia Luke, and Tim Daggett. Uh, expectations for the U.S. They start with Russia. And off the charts. The ball. <laughs> yeah, the numbers will be off the charts early. Absolutely. And you know what's different about this World Championships, though? It typically... All three of the Americans would go. There would be a small break, and then the Russians would go. But this time, they will be alternating Russian, Americans, and, the, and so forth. See McCallum, Heard, Biles getting set, those three. Grace McCallum, big start to her career, only 15 years of age. Yeah, she has had an unbelievable year of competition, won a number of major events all across the world. And there are some of the powers to be at USA Gymnastics. We saw a shot of Tom Forrester, the women's national team coordinator, high performance. Nastia, what about Russia and, and their expectations coming in? Well, you know, they, they haven't had as much success as in the past, but I really think that with their leader back, and we will see her not here on the vault, but Mustafina, she is back. And an incredible story just recently gave birth to a child. Oh. Uh, that a, is not a good sign. Yeah, right that is there. not a good sign, but she is back and she truly is the leader of that team. And that is kind of what they have been missing. You know, they have some incredible talent, but they haven't had that leader. And that's what they're hopeful for to get, you know, back on the podium. And, and they did pretty well in the qualifying round. And, you know, of course, finishing second place behind us. There's no chance that they're going to even be close to winning the gold medal. But at this point, everyone really is trying to go for the silver and bronze. So that fall, Lilia Kamova, when that happens, that's your last moment before actually competing. That's a tough one. Yeah, not good. And in the qualifying rounds, believe it or not, they didn't have to count this score, but Russia had a gymnast land so poorly that she received a zero. They had three other scores that counted that enabled them to have that second place team finish, but not not a good start for Russia before the meet even begins. So it'll be Grace McCallum who gets things underway for the U.S. 15 years old, beginning of the season, they asked her about her thoughts of getting to a world championship. She said, definitely not. I was not really <laughs> even thinking about that at all. And I'll tell you what, she does what's called a, a Yurchenko double full. You see that 5.4? That is her maximum score, 15.4, and she does this effortlessly. Really nice. So as you said, Tim, the 5.4, the difficulty adding on the 10.0 would be the execution score, and then you'll add those two scores together. And she really doesn't strike me as having a lot of power and doesn't twist too fast, but pulls that around, and believe me, all across the world they are striving for gymnasts that can perform a vault like that and the usa has got a ton of them and they have her simone biles 
So we'll hop around first rotation of four as we go over to the uneven bars. It's China and Canada starting there. Chen Yila first to go for China. And I'll tell you what, if China does what they're capable, they'll have a great start on, on the uneven bars. They are phenomenal here, phenomenal on the balance beam. They had some mistakes in qualifying, but they sure have the talent to get things done. Saw Grace McCallum, 15-year-old, Chen Yila, 16 years of age, and a first-year senior competitor. Tricky combination coming up right here. And then she'll swing forward, do a release called a Ginger. Beautiful. Pike Jaeger out of that full spin. A little bit short on that last handstand. Big hop in the dismount, but absolutely stunning. I remember. Growing up, and as a gymnast, I would just watch the Chinese on the uneven bars and be mesmerized by by all of the skills, but their body positions, everything oh, yeah. is just absolutely stunning. See the number for Grace McCallum, 14.533. Very, very good start. Great score. So over to the balance beam, Natomi Hatakeda from Japan as they are together with Brazil. And I'll tell you what, Japan has really been making a move as of late. They actually didn't perform as well as I anticipated in the qualifying rounds. Qualified sixth. They have always been second fiddle to the men's gymnastics team that is, has a storied history of so many world Olympic champions. That was close. I can't believe she stayed on there. That looked like she was coming off for sure. It's only an 18 year old making her world championships debut in Doha. Just the dismount here. Double pike, big step on the landing. A good routine, a solid routine, but a lot of places where judges put pen to paper and took some deductions. Tell me how Takeda, whose father won a bronze medal in the team event in the 92 Olympics. Her mom competed for Japan at the World University Games. Another look. You know, the balance beam isn't always the easiest event to start off, especially in the team finals. We talked about this with the men yesterday, but three women go up on each of the apparatus and all three scores have to count. So there's absolutely no room for error. Whereas in the qualification round, you're able to drop the lowest score. And like I mentioned, Russia got to drop the lowest score of a zero or they would have been absolutely out of the competition. If something like that would happen here, most likely that team would finish last. So the number for Chen Yila. So we go back to fault. Remember, it's the U.S. and Russia. Angelina Melnikova. Has really come along quite a bit, was very inconsistent in the beginning of her international career. She'll do the same vault that we've seen, the Yurchenko double twist. Really nice height. Little leg separation in the air towards the towards the end of that vault and of course the hot back. Gets a lot of power, but like you said, it's a little bit messy. Watch right here, the legs come apart. Has good power though. Very hard on the lower body, the ankles and the knees when you come in on this landing. If you see somebody that it almost looks like her, her feet bother her so much that she intentionally scoots them underneath her to avoid the shock of landing because believe me, 
when you're flipping and rotating and traveling, it hurts when you land like that. Mm. Prior to Melnikova on vault, Morgan hurt a 14.633. A little hop on the landing for Morgan. 12.366 for Atakeda. She just got 10th to death in that routine. And Arena Alexeva from Russia on vault 13.6 as they go back and forth. You, you like the back and forth. I, I love the back and forth. I think it's more sport-like. It's... Uh, it, you know, I'm sure it's not as easy for the competitors, but I think it's it's far better for, for the spectators. As you sit and shake your head, Nasty. <laughs> All right, so Simone Biles in our first look at the 21-year-old Spring, Texas, almost two years away, came back, saw her at the U.S. Classic, the U.S. Championships, sensational, qualifying sensational. Here we go. And she does... The easier vault. I saw that 6.0 on the screen, and I knew that was coming, unless it was an error. That is not the Biles. But this vault still, don't get us wrong, is, is very difficult, beautiful body position in the air. So much power. Definitely could have done the Biles, which would have been adding another half twist. And four more tenths of potential start score before she did the Biles this was considered state of the art really the most difficult vault being done in the world still state of the art <laughs> well it is state of the art but well the Biles is state of the art adding the extra half turn but that's how high the expectations are every time we see her do anything yeah absolutely if, it, if it's not a shake your head mind explosion <laughs> experience you go okay that was okay yeah meanwhile nobody else can do a ball right. like that no absolutely you'll not see one at these entire world championships or that score how about the number 15.5 and the u.s already 44 666 off the charts so then the uh, kind of a from Russia, and we saw that last moment, remember, the last vault in the fall prior to the competition. And what she did on that vault, she only did a full twisting laid out off of the table. She wants to do a one and a half twist like Simone did on the second part of her vault. Oh boy. And she did not get that around. She showed support with her hands on the mat so that is a full point off. Just doesn't have the power to get this around. Really low landing. And as we said earlier, unfortunately, every score has to count. Hence the reaction. After that effort, Miles leading the U.S. First rotation and a success. Man. Just run that on replay time and again. Off and running for the action in Doha. Back with the floor exercise. Kim Bowie from Germany, the 29-year-old veteran. Germany grouped together with France. Has had two experiences at the Olympic Games, both in Rio and then in 2012 before that.
Oh boy. That was close. Well, not bad. Pretty clean overall, that mistake on her third tumbling run, but Germany, the eighth qualifying team into this, actually bounced out Great Britain, who I was pretty sure was going to make it in by just a tenth of a point. The last vault we saw 13.233 with struggles at the end. Time of so Russia losing ground in that opening rotation. Absolutely. This was somewhat devastating for them, and to be honest, she gets a better score than I thought she was going to get. There were so many deductions on that. You can't just land. Your body has to be open, upright, and you have to show preparation before you hit the floor. Melanie De Jesus Dos Santos from France, 18 years of age, fifth in the all-around at the World Championships in 2017. Absolutely gorgeous gymnast. She won the most recent Euro European Championships on this event. Does some pretty serious tumbling of herself. Full twisting double layout right off the top. I thought it was great. I just love her gymnastics throughout all four of the events. And believe it or not, she's one of just a handful of gymnasts who have a shot to definitely place in the all-around and win a medal. Of course, second to Simone Biles, but she's one of them. Here is that mount. Very difficult, full twisting double layout. Her hips closed just a little bit. And before Simone Biles started doing her double-double in a perfectly laid out position, that was about as good as anyone's done in the world. Qualified for the individual event final floor, sixth. Born in Martinique, moved to France in 2013 to join the national team. Yeah, a bunch of years ago, she had a really bad landing on vault on what she's going to perform today, a double twisting Yurchenko and blew her knee out. Sub-13 number for Kim Bui. 25.566. <laughs> little message on her water bottle. Yeah, in English. <laughs> Different experience. First time going to the Middle East in Doha for the World Championships. No question. And these gymnasts have been there a while. I mean, they've been there at least a week already. Oh, yeah, especially with the time change. You want to go over and get acclimated not only to the time change, but the environment, the equipment is always different. So you heard the numbers for that floor exercise as we take you to Mai Murakami from Japan, the 22-year-old from Tokyo, made history last year at Worlds, who won the floor title, and now the beginning of a beam routine. 
and actually she fell on this event, the third event of her all around in Montreal 2017. And really, if she had not, would most likely have come out on top over Morgan Hurd, who eventually won that title. She had to settle for a fourth place, which as you've said, Nasia is not a good place to be. Second and fourth, the two most difficult places to end. She's really the linchpin of this Japanese team, though. Such a hard worker, so capable. Has all the qualities that you look for. Very powerful, but also can perform and show the artistry that's necessary. Dismount, double pipe. Very nice landing, strong routine as we would expect. Happy with that. Fourth in the all around last year at the World Championships. The Japanese men winning the bronze in the team finals yesterday, but she has truly just helped her team on, on the women's side. You know, the men have just have had a lot of success and they are now on the rise on the women's side as well. So we get the number in a moment from my Murakami. Los Santos, 13.433. So 38, as you try to keep a running tally. So right now, and obviously, as we go along, those standings will change, except for most likely the U.S. at the top. Boy, that was, that was really pretty harsh, that score. I mean, it, certainly there were some errors in it, but... In my opinion, one, one of the best workers of floor exercise in the world. An 8.1. Yes. <laughs> Execution seems a little, little harsh. Yeah, I just, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't agree with the direction the FIG is going with the execution scores. I mean, it is so, when the best in the world are losing a, a point, a point and a half, even more, I, I just don't see the... I don't see the reason there. In keeping with yesterday, similar or? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely, it's 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 too critical. The Yu Ting Ting, the 18 year old from China here on the uneven bars. See the same combination that we saw earlier. Right into that Ginger. done a little nicer, a little bit more flight on it. China renowned for these. Oh my gosh. Huge mistake. Hmm. Double layout somersault, big step, but. She tries to cover it up, unfortunately, still going to get a lot of deduction there. Hmm. So you look at the overall picture with the U.S. at the top. Of that battle for second and third, Russia and China, maybe Japan, Murakami, 13.766. <laughs> and Morgan Hurd for the U.S. ready. This taking place earlier. Very nice, clean. A little bit of hip angle, but, and the hop, of course. All around, champion. Pops it up, spots the ground, not as difficult of a vault as we, of course, saw from what Simone, but as you said, Tim, anybody else in any other country would have taken this vault as their anchor. We got the world feed. We're taking the pictures from that. We're just taking it back in time here. Remember that took place earlier. 14.633. 
Right, meanwhile, on bars, Ellie Blackwell getting set. And boy, what a year did she have in 2017. Was the runner-up to Morgan Hurd in the all-around. Got to do it at home in Montreal for the all-around. And as definitely one of the leaders of the Canadian team as well. I don't know exactly what happened. She was supposed to do another full spin, but at a, a half turn at the end of it, and it just looked like something with her grip was wrong. You know, Ting Ting with that effort on bars. As Ellie Black will be the last one to go. 13.4. And actually, actually that's, not as bad as yeah. I thought it was going to be. And that's one of the criticisms that most people have about gymnastics scoring right now. They don't really differentiate. You know, uh, someone can do a phenomenal routine and they'll get 1.4 off, and someone will then make a big mistake and they get 1.9 off. It's, 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 it's not right. So Ellie Black, the 23-year-old, as good as they come, from Canada, best that they have seen there. Whoa, that was far. <laughs> Qualified sixth. Day one. So she will be in the all-around finals. And wow, that's I don't really know what that was. was. Probably supposed to connect, connect the Jaeger into the next release. Everything has to go to a handstand. In gymnastics, and because she missed that connection, she then has to do just a, a really low cast. That's a big hit for Canada. I mean, this is the silver medalist in the all around from the world championships. Ab absolutely. This completes really far in that one. And another release right here called the Hindorf. Has a very unorthodox, unorthodox dismount. You don't see this very often. It was done a lot many, many years ago, but they've actually modified the rules. A C dismount is not a problem anymore in women's gymnastics. So the leader of that Canadian team, and they qualified fourth. So hopes of a medal. Remember, the top three teams qualify their countries for the Olympics. Got that early qualification here. A little bit out from Tokyo. First efforts for the U.S. on vault as they vault into the lead as expected and expected to win the women's team final. Today taking place in Doha as Simone Biles leads the way. We close out rotation number one of the World Championships. So one rotation in the books for the women's team final and the U.S. with a commanding lead. About 2.7 points over China and Russia, the top three. Canada even with a bit of a struggle at the end there in fourth right now and Japan rounding out the top five. Thoughts? Well, for me, the biggest thing is that USA was unbelievable, but the next three teams, China, Russia, Canada, they all counted a mistake. Yeah. We have Germany and so, on right second now. rotation, and the U.S. will be with Russia on the uneven bars. And line up with Morgan Hurd, Riley McCusker, and... There's a surprise, Simone Biles. Well, you know, I was just about to say, I think if you told Simone just a year, two years ago, that she'd be anchoring a bar lineup at the World Championship Team Final, she would have said, no chance. But, but, and she has come in talking about how important that is to her to have success in this event. Yeah, she said she wants to win a bar medal more than any other event. Helen Olson from Canada as we start second rotation with the coverage on the balance beam. series out. 
obviously a little bit off on that. just extremely cautious. <laughs> Balance being at the last World Championships was judged so harshly. Beautiful illusion turn right there. But it was, it, it, people were really shocked at how, how strict the judging was. Hasn't been quite that bad here so far. Team, but as you said, Tim, every single skill a little too cautious. Just seemed very nervous. And, and don't don't get me wrong, leading off your team on the balance beam is, is not easy. But Olsen, who's 18 now, she was 16 in Rio, the youngest member of any team in any sport for Canada. There now, freshman at the University of Alabama. Angelina Melnikova from Russia will get things underway on bars. And this is a great event for Team Russia. All three of their athletes, and of course, they'll be anchored by the great Aliyah Mustafina. They're just known for being great on bars, having a lot of flight. That first handstand was very low, missing that connection. Now another transition, back up to the bar. Inside stall, though she scoots her feet inside her hands, now a front flip. struggle, but she dealt with that. Now, Nikba, who came in with some momentum, especially on bars, won three medals at the recent European Championships, including a bronze. The uneven bar. And she's also one of those athletes that is contention to win an all-around medal here. As a, a budding friendship with the next gymnast for the USA, Morgan Hurd. Exchanged words as she was leaving the podium. Get the feeling Morgan would talk to anyone, though. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. Well, it's, it's a whole new world, actually, for Team USA the, with the Coroli Aragon. Over, I should say. 12 3 3 3 for Olsen. So we take you over to Florida. Jay Barbosa from Brazil. 12.833 for Team Japan. And I don't know if we'll get a shot here, but the great Valeri Lukin, now a, a contributor to the Brazilian effort. You're familiar with him, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Very difficult opening, whip to a full in.
Well, that was a great routine. Team Brazil has been very impressive here this week at the World Championships. They've had so many coaching changes every single Olympic cycle basically and talking to my dad <laughs> yesterday that's exactly what he said is you know they're they're having such great practices and they're so much more consistent yet they're not quite able to bring that over into the competition yet they had a few mistakes in the qualifying round Barbosa who's now 27 years old go all the way back to the 2007 World Championships and she became the first Brazilian to medal at Worlds won a bronze the all around that year yeah, that was huge for Brazil at that time, certainly. Part of the Beijing Games, the Rio Games, and an eighth place finish for the team that year. It's a total team I'll think of uh, 14.166. So at the moment, at least, Russia into second place as they battle with China right now and Canada, Japan for medals. And Morgan Hurd of the U.S. We saw her talking a moment ago. Now she's ready to compete. Once again, setting the table here. A lot of people commented that she looked so prepared, knocking out bar routine after bar routine in training. short on that handstand. Inside full. Just the dismount left. It's a dramatic moment. That yeah, was a great routine for Morgan Hurd. Just that landing, though. And that took place a moment ago. So you see the scores right away. 14.433. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, she had a few handstands that were a little bit low. The execution, 8.333. 13.1 for Barbosa. I don't from know. Brazil. Like, that to me is a little strict. Obviously, she had a few landings that required deduction, but all, just all around, the judging has been very strict. Asuka Terramoto from Japan on floor now. Japanese national team for quite some time. Asuka Terumoto, who's in her sixth world championship event already. They're going to stay on through Tokyo and the Olympics as the world championships continue from Doha, Qatar. Back on beam for Chen Yila from China, the second of the gymnasts to go on beam from China. The first one, Zhang Jin, had a fall. And remember, they're right in the thick of things for a medal. Remember, you know, this is not the qualification. It's three up, three count. So that means right now China is already counting two falls. 14 friends, 14.633. Wow. That is 
That was unusual there because she was nowhere near ready for the beam. Hips really not in the right position. And, and China is so phenomenal on balance beam. They are spectacular. But it could be their undoing today. Oh, boy. Yeah, at this pace, they need to be very cautious because they could factor themselves right off the podium, yeah. which would be shocking. Great dismount, though. Round off triple twist and. Terramoto, we saw that routine a moment ago. 13.333 from Japan. Right now in fifth, where they were after the first rotation. So, Aliyah Mustafina mentioned her and all her success earlier. The 24-year-old who is competing at the World Championships as a mom. Yeah. The challenge of that. Oh, <laughs> very nice. So cute. Seven-time Olympic medalist. Two of them gold. Now she was too young to make the trip. She is at home with grandma. All the way back to 2010 and that team an all around gold medal for her. Worlds. Here we go. Riley McCusker, by the way, a 14.5 prior. Great combination right there. Earned some super bonus points. Let's see about the handstands. That was good. She's one of those competitors that when you need to be better, she is always. She's the reigning Olympic champion for the last two Olympic Games on this event right here, considered the greatest possibly of all time on the uneven bars. Going on uneven bars and beam only throughout the individual. Take another look. You know, she makes everything look so easy, and I know we, we've said this about Simone Biles on so many of the other events, but specifically on the uneven bars, the way she connects each skill, no hesitation, so fluid, just and beautiful. It, and it's funny, it, in the qualifying rounds and in podium training, she was taped up like crazy. Her knees, her ankles, no tape today. Geneva 12.833. Yikes. Oh, man. You saw fifth place right now for China. Santos, Melanie ready on ball. Double twisting you tranquil for her. Actually pretty darn good. This is the vault that she injured herself on a few years ago. Severe landing. It was kind of gruesome to watch and totally blew the knee out toward the ACL. Needed the surgery, of course. But has finally seemed to kind of master this beast for her. Yeah, that's never something fun to be thinking about. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. And have to repeat that ball. <laughs> Thanks for saying it after the ball, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, pretty good score, though. Yeah. 9233 three, execution. Get those high numbers on vault, and they're all the way up in second at the moment, but Aliyah Mustafina, 14.5. That 8.7 execution, pretty darn good. So I, I relative. Could have, I could have gone up a few tenths. Yeah. Oh. A absolutely, I, I could have gone up a few tenths. It's just not what the judges do right. nowadays. So the challenge for Simone Biles on uneven bars and the focus on this throughout the World Championships now. Problem day one, and this is tricky sometimes for her. great. New ish skill for Simone and Lewin from low to high. 
watch this. Two flips, two twists. Really good. <laughs> You're searching for adjectives. I know, you've used them all. And, and again, not to, you know, keep saying the same thing over and over again, but I, I think if you would have asked her, will you ever anchor the uneven bars lineup? She would have said no, yeah. not a chance. And it's just, it's absolutely incredible to see not only the level of difficulty that, you know, she's added new skills to, as you have said, and, and that dismount brand new, but the confidence that she now has on this event. Yeah, crazy. She told me at the beginning of her career that she wanted to be like, one of her heroes at that time, Alicia Sacramoni, who did only three events, didn't even do the bars. Hated the events so much. Yeah. Told me she wanted to take a chainsaw to it. <laughs> I remember that. Three straight world all-around titles for Simone Biles. And now wants to, more than anything, add that one. So Murakami set now for Japan on floor. And this is a great routine. As you mentioned earlier, Terry, she is the reigning world champion on this event. Well, that was absolutely fabulous. If that's not the biggest score so far today on floor, I'll be shocked. And I believe the judges got it wrong if they don't give it to her. Beautiful double layout. She started with a double twisting double. There it is, right here. Just the smallest little slide back on the landing. But this was well performed, well executed, with huge, huge difficulty. When she won that floor title last year at the World Championship, she was Japan's first female world gymnastics champion in some 63 years. It was big. Love yeah. everything about that routine. It took place a short time ago. You saw Simone on the uneven bars in the background. I mean, I, I just, <laughs> where, where did they find two points? Yeah, that, I don't know. And now the numbers four miles, 14866. And the big difference between her and Aliyah from Russia is she has a much higher start value. So Simone Biles taking us to break and taking the U.S. perhaps to another team title World Gymnastics Championships. So as we head to the third rotation, here are the standings in that U.S. lead. It's grown, approaching five now, and Russia has bumped China from that second spot. So it's the U.S., Russia, and then China. Some problems in that last rotation with the athletes from China and France moving up. Japan all the way down in sixth right now. Yeah, Canada taking a major hit also, dropping all the way down. But, you know, really spot. from from fourth all the way down is... Very tight. It's a tight race. And remember the top three. Not that you don't have another chance. You got at the next World Championships. And then, but as you look at the start list for 
France and Germany right now. Um, the top three do qualify. And you put that out of the way if you're able to do that. Medal here at the World Championships and qualify already for the Olympics. So, yes, that is us. <laughs> we roll on here and midway through. And that lead of almost five as the U.S. and Russia move over to the beam now, you would expect to grow even larger. Without question, it is going to continue to grow until the last American gymnast performs. Which will Simone be Simone Biles. Biles. Yeah. <laughs> So it's Riley McCusker, Kara Eaker, and Simone Biles. And Eaker so good on beam. Absolutely, certainly a contender. She has a really different style. She doesn't do the super big acrobatic stuff, but the connections and the aesthetics of it are off the chart. Riley McCusker, we saw that fall in qualifying. We started the show with some of those highlights and lowlights, if you will, but are you surprised to see her involved in this now? Yes and no. So if you would have gone back a few years at a World Championships under a previous coordinator, uh, Marta Crowley, of course, I would have been very surprised had, if she would have been put in the lineup. But now, you know, with with all of the changes at USA Gymnastics, I think this is a great chance for her for redemption. Here's that fall that she had. And this is something that is so easily fixable. So I'm, you know, just crossing my fingers for her because this is almost more of a, a confidence thing. There wasn't really an error that she struggled with a lot it wasn't that she didn't have enough endurance power she wasn't prepared it truly is i think a little bit of a mental thing well the coordinator now tom forrester posted on facebook the logic of the order today and he said that you know she's been training great and uh, getting the job done and we want to give people experience in certain situations that would have never happened in the past in my opinion Ms. McCusker getting to the world championships last year during that team selection camp she had an injury a hamstring and so that took her out of a chance and first on floor exercise representing China Luo Wan. you hear the announcement Luo Wan the 18 year old from Beijing you're on floor Her second time at Worlds. Starts with a really neat double turn with her leg all the way up. needs to be good the rest of the way they they absolutely do you know we talked a little earlier about valeri lucan helping out with team brazil well liang chow is now the head coach of the chinese federation he of course was the american coach to sean johnson and gabby douglas both olympic gold medalists he said the difference he's trying to do is I'm promoting happy gymnastics and happy sport instead of just only hard work. And you see that. Haven't seen a shot of him on the floor today. He may actually not be on the floor. Most likely in the stands.
So the warm-up continues on the uneven bars. Which France, is a little odd. Germany, yeah. <laughs> they get a little longer time on, on men's parallel bars. And, and but they normally don't start till yeah. all the events are ready. A lot of things we're not sure of on this. <laughs> yeah, if you were watching yesterday, we, you know we're taking the, uh, the feed of the, uh, the world broadcaster so we don't control the pictures. But rotation three of the four, and uh, on bars, it's France and Germany, on floor, China and Canada, the U.S. and Russia on beam, and on vault, Brazil and Japan. to go on uneven bar and right off the top she's got some very tricky combinations that have to be dead on to pull it off here's the thing we're, we're hoping they show riley mccusker officially but if they don't she, she is complete her balance beam routine 13.733 is the number for mccusker here we go. Right here, now connected. Nice release there. Pretty good handstands. Double laid out, pretty low on the landing. That big hop forward, but a good exercise. I've seen her do a much more difficult routine where she connects a lot of those things immediately together. But again, not, doesn't get deduction for not connecting them, but her starting value would have been higher had she connected those elements. Here, the dismount double layout just doesn't have enough rotation. And you see her hat close her hips on the landing. The judges are brutal. They're going to take three tenths for that hop because it was more than one meter. And they're going to deduct for her body position upon landing. So I want 12, 8, 6, 6. So China in second place for the moment, but been a bit of a struggle. China's got to get out of the 12s. Yeah, yep. <laughs> exactly. Tomi Hatsukeda for Japan on vault. Not as difficult, again, as a vault that we have been seeing a lot of, but what makes this vault so difficult is that blind landing. So you'll see her back facing the vault as opposed to being able to really eye the ground on the last half, last half twist if she were to be doing a double twist. But very, very good ball. Yeah, nicely done, but lower level difficulty. You see the 5.0 there. That is a good score, 14. All right, so the beam open right now. Kara Eker is next to go for the United States. And then Cusker with that number that we gave you a moment ago. And Alexeva from Russia has gone sharp. He 13 3 6 6 for France. And this routine is, is really gorgeous. She starts with what's called a switch leap. And it kind of everything just flows together when it goes well for her. But it's a kind of routine that, you know, it is, can be a little dangerous because there are so many things that are supposed to be connected, starting right off the top into those right there. Has a 
big test right here. Super hard. Gorgeous, that side aerial to two layout step outs. This is great so far. You know, she made this team predominantly, certainly, for the balance beam. And the help she can give Team USA. Really nice job. Excellent. She's the second place qualifier going into the beam finals behind Simone Biles. But a great routine. I was going to say, who's number one? Simone Biles, <laughs> obviously. The 15-year-old from Missouri competing at her first world championships, Kara Eaker. And just absolutely stunning. Right from the beginning, here's that mount. Called a switch leap, as you were saying to him, and immediately into a ring leap. A few of the connections throughout her routine were a little hesitant, but not this not one. This one yeah. <laughs> and that is so difficult. She makes it look so easy, but those three elements, three flight elements in a row, so hard. Second at the U.S. Championships in the balance beam. Kara Eaker as we continue with the action from Doha. Rotation three continues. The women's team final. Kara Eaker and some of the skills on B. Just beautiful work. Tricky combination into the dismount, the two and a half, just the little slide, but. As we get a slow-mo look of that dismount. The person to my left, I think this was your dismount yeah, in minus, the Olympics. Minus, minus the, the back handspring, handspring. Which makes it a lot more difficult. <laughs> Personal coach, Armini Barretian. 14-3-3-3. A little bit less than she got in the qualifying round. So next up on beam, Ali Mustafina from Russia. Won a world championship on beam back in 2013. Of course, at the London Games. And in Rio. Yeah, in Rio, she won a medal of every color. Gold, silver, bronze, gold in the uneven bars. Silver for the team and the bronze in the all-around. Really nice double turn. A lot more difficult than it looks. You know, some people have questioned why come back after, you know, having a child. Really nice skill right there. And she said... You know, being a mom doesn't end your life. If you love something, you should still do that. And she said, I love gymnastics and I missed it. Missed being with the teammates and the excitement of competition. We'll get to see another very famous mom in the ball finals, Oksana Chusevitna. Who has been around since I think about 1990. She competed with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Double back somersault here at the end. A great landing, wow. but I think that might have been overtime. I'm not, not quite sure. Which will be a tenth of a point deduction. But this is what she's so good at, and, and I believe you said this earlier, but when she really, she she is so reliable. You know, she's so solid, she's such a team leader. And that is what 
Russia was really missing. And she just absolutely projects calmness. Mm -hmm. and especially on a, a, a team with some athletes that are a little skittish or not that experienced. Beautiful skill called an Anodi, named after a great Hungarian gymnast. Look at those eyes. Latched onto those beam, to that beam as her feet do. She actually just said that she wasn't trying to rush because she thought it was not worth the one tenth deduction. Yeah, so she was. Because I thought it was yeah. over time. And believe me, she's telling the coach that. And she's not afraid to tell the coach that either. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and there you see the penalty of one ten. And so you're going to see a very big difference with the final scores. Trying to listen in, maybe you can translate more, but she, she didn't <laughs> yeah. have anything else. All she said was no. <laughs> so on to Simone Biles now, who, as you mentioned, Tim, qualified number one and the number in qualification 14.8 see what she brings here in the team final triple turn done in the wolf position nobody spins faster than simone there's a couple of big Test. The first one comes right off the top of the front flip with a half turn. Our series flip up, layout, step out, layout, step out. And remember, folks, she is dealing with a kidney stone at this point. Wow. And you do not see that from Simone Biles. Hands down to the beam. It's not a fall, but it's a whole half of a point deduction. A little reminiscent of the Olympic game finals where she did the same thing walked away with a bronze instead of the gold. Now performing on the floor, Africa, representing Canada, Brooklyn Moore. And you can definitely see the frustration. And I mean, this is, is obviously a huge mistake for her. It's just so stupid. I don't know if you heard that. Yep. Simone just said it's just so stupid. Stupid talking to her. Coach Laurent, and there is nobody that is more brutal on Simone than Simone when things don't work out perfectly. This is where she had that problem. A little bit maybe under-rotated, and you see she grabs the beam. You see the look on her face even in that moment. But she finishes up with the most difficult dismount being done today in the world, really. Do you, do you want me to get Laurent to do it? She's on the sky. She's trying to get it to So she waits for the number, which won't be as high as she had hoped or expected, but should be still high. Janina on floor for China. Yeah, I think it's still going to be in a, a 14, which is a huge number. Yeah.
Well, that was a solid routine, not the level of difficulty that we are about to see from Team USA coming up. Top eight teams in the entire world doing what they do best, world-class So remember a lot going on at these world championships. The top three teams will earn a spot at the Olympic Games a year earlier than typical. So that floor routine taking place a short time ago. The number already 12.9 for Chen. Hila, close to what she did in qualifying, did not qualify for the individual floor final. And the number for Simone Biles, so it's not 14, 13.733. And she is not happy at all, as you can see. Disappointed in herself, I'm sure, but also disappointed in her effort for the team. But they have nothing to fear at this point whatsoever. Moments ago, on bars, Juliette Bosu from France. When you put your legs in between the bars like that, it's much more difficult. You get some bonus points for that. Front dismount. Really nice landing. Hard to do that. Osu, the 18 year old who recently came in seventh on uneven bars at the European Championships. Nice flight. And here's that dismount. Double front. No way to spot the landing, and uh, I'd give that a stick. At first, I thought maybe, you know, there was a little step in there, but. And over 14 for that routine on bar. So France, at the moment, currently in third place. That battle for third and that final spot at the Olympics to qualify already. And Russia's been up there in second. China, they've had their problems. France, and right outside the top three, at least at the moment, in third. Murakami. Short time ago as well, here on ball. Now they're double twisting. Your chain go. Very solid. He's got that Kohei. Uchimura thing going on, lining up the round off prior to the start. I love how you actually do it too while you yeah, say I know. it. Yeah, I know. see what you were doing right now. <laughs> Double twist, just a little bit of hip angle. Small little hop back, but should be a very good score. Yep, 14.6. And Japan right in that mix, hovering just outside the top three. We'll see, got a chance, got another rotation still to go. The women's team final. Fans from Germany and all across the globe taking in the action, Doha. So the U.S. expected to win with the lead from the start. They're eager with that team routine of the lead win. So as we head to the final rotation, pretty surprising the standings right now. Not that the U.S. is on top and that lead has grown. After one rotation, it was 2.7 and then nearly five after two and up to six and a half or so right now. But you got Russia holding on to the second spot. How about Brazil rounding out the top three and China all the way down to seventh place? It's crazy. But China is going to ball, which historically hasn't been great for them. But they do have three gymnasts that can pull off a pretty good vault, but they have to be on as well because it's not easy for them. See the bars for Japan and Brazil. Brazil, that would be a huge accomplishment, though, if they could actually medal at the World Championships in the team. Absolutely. <laughs> The U.S. obviously has been absolutely dominant at the World Championships and the Olympics. You go back to 2003, won five of the last seven, three in a row. Didn't have the team event 2013 or 2017 in that held Olympic years. They won two Olympic gold medals as a team during that period as well.
Yeah, but what you just saw on that screen right there, you see the USA, you see Russia, and you see China. You don't see Brazil. And uh, right now, in third spot, it's going to be a tall order for them because they are going to bars, which is not one of their better events. And of course, we, we didn't show it, as we have said that we don't control the speed, but they did have a fall on the balance beam yeah. on their first event as well. The stopping up from Russia, Russia and the U.S. will be on four and push things out in this final rotation. If you wonder about margin of victory at the World Championships or the Olympics, the largest was in 2016 for the U.S. 8.2 and some change. Russia was second, and so right now the lead 6.533. Morgan Hurd, Grace McCallum, Simone Biles rounding it out on floor for the U.S. The only little hiccup, if you will, for the U.S. or for the leader of the U.S. team, we just saw it on beam in Simone Biles. And that won't happen again. <laughs> you know, she's going to go into the all-around finals and the balance beam finals, and, and I guarantee be a little extra cautious on that skill. Leah Mustafina will get things going on floor for Russia. Russia and the U.S.A. take on the floor in just a moment. That time penalty a moment ago on beam for the seven time Olympic medalist. And you talk about her being a mom and, and being the leader, being the veteran, but she is 24. And I know in gymnastics age, that can be considered old, but 24. You know, absolutely. And she's a little beat up. You know, she's had major surgery on both knees and ankle and was coming back after the baby and late April, had a meniscus injury in her knee again. She just has such belief in herself. Doesn't question anything. Yeah, absolutely. Just so solid. Scored a 13.2 in the qualifying. And that's predominantly because her maximum starting score isn't that high. Starting on ball from Canada, Sophie Nambla. So Russia won the team silver in Rio at the last Olympics. Bronze medal at the last World Championships where the team event was held and they were involved. And it is a huge dismount on bars for Mama Marconi. Full twisting double salto. They take you to beam. Team Japan and Lorenz Sharpie from France. You know, just thinking about the separation and, and trying to get 
that third spot and the bronze. Yes, China was all the way down in seventh. Yes, Brazil's in third, but it was so close, third through seventh. Not much separation at all. France right in the mix. Yeah, fourth right now after three rotations. Lorenz Corday, 13.066. Qualifying round on the balance beam. Next on goal, Wuhan thinking about Brazil and what that would mean if they could capture a medal. No world team medals. Women or men. And this. It's going to be tough because of where they finish up. Well, they had 114 in the qual qualifying rounds on the uneven bars, but then 13, another 13, and a 12 that I'm sure will not be competing here today. gymnastics community that want to see that skill band. Myself included. <laughs> <laughs> it just it has a lot of difficulty and so you see it from gymnasts all over the world and sometimes you see some really bad ones. Those pretty good. So on bars from Murakami 13.133. On bars, Kaji Barbosa from Brazil. As a ballet slipper on one of those feet. Did you ever do that last year? I didn't, but I'm assuming that probably helps her with those the turns. turns. Yeah. A little short on that landing, but overall a great routine. Doing her job, that's for sure. Take you over the floor and for the U.S. Morgan Hurd. Now performing on floor, representing the United States of America, Morgan Hurd. Not just today, but the entire world thus far. She has been so solid and dependable for Team USA. Double twisting double to start right here. Little bit of a bounce back. Big step which will be three tenths and then out of bounds for one. much power and I think at the end right there was kind of making an adjustment thinking don't go too hard and landed a little short yeah once again nothing to worry about 
for Team USA. Go back to the number for Mustafa in uh, 13-06-6 as Russia solidifying that second spot. And 13-366 for Lorette Sharpie from France. An improvement over qualifying. As they try to capture that third spot on the podium. Sarah Voss from Germany ready on beam. Very popular mount nowadays. Another one of those skills like those wolf turns that has a high level of difficulty. Currently on Vault One from Canada, Shallon Olson. and had to withdraw from the competition. in Doha, Sarah Voss after the beam routine. Morgan Hurd, that's a tough one, 12-9-6-6. That is a full point lower than she was capable of doing, which she did in the qualifying, but she'll get two more chances at that in the all-around finals, and then she has also qualified into the event finals for floor. So Brazil trying to hang on to finish third, capture a bronze medal, Jade Barbosa, 27-year-old veteran from Rio. Team 3-3 in the qualifying. Solid score. Nice combination there. Little short, though, on the handstands. Oh, boy. And that right there, an error. And another one. And this is catastrophic for another mistake. And she is absolutely exhausted at this time. Having to, I think she really doesn't even know what to do. So many errors there. Remember, Brazil was in third place coming into the last rotation. And with this bar routine, they will not be anymore. The hopes perhaps gone after that. Just so many times missing what she needed to do. This is all after the mistake. The dismount is nice. Beautiful double layout. But she cannot believe that. That's like worst nightmare stuff right there. No teammates around her at the moment. Liu Jinru from China over on fault. Critical. Pretty good, pretty good. They, like I said, they've got three vaulters that can put up some pretty big numbers. She looked, it, funny to me, it looked like she kind of had a, a stutter step right before she was about to hit the board, which can typically be really bad, but. So 14, three, six, six, you can rack up the numbers on vault. And remember China, forget that number on the left right now, the team one, but they were in seventh going into the final rotation, but making up a lot of ground. 
Maybe to get up to third. So we continue with floor. For Lila Akaimova, 13.10 for Team Russia. Now competing on floor from the USA, Grace McCallum. So it's Grace McCallum, and I gotta update my birthday list because I said she was 15. Today she turns 16 and Fun happy birthday. birthday. And there's someone else we know having a birthday today. Happy birthday, Nasty. Thank you. Grace on floor, and, and get this, they take the top eight gymnasts into the event finals. She was seventh in the world, but because two Americans finished ahead of her, she does not get to go to the finals. That's really unfair, especially when you consider the birthday. <laughs> Look at the number 12, 2, 3, 3. And she knows it. Mm, boy, very costly. This, this race for third is something here in the, the final rotation. You know what, though? I, I thought that that was going to be way worse than that, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Boston, yeah, Germany, 13-6. On base. Flavia Saraiva. The 19-year-old from Brazil and trying to salvage something on bars. Now. But it qualified only a 12.4. The standing standards are really tight, and everything's up for grabs. Competed at home in Rio, part of that eighth-place finish for Brazil at the Olympics team. Yeah, she was something, too. Such a personality. You don't get to see that here, but on, on floor, she's wonderful, so expressive. A fan favorite. Oh, boy. And right off the top, she clips both her feet on the bar on the release. Really short on every handstand so far. It's hard for the judges to see that hitting the bar like that, but she certainly did, which is a, a big deduction. A lot of deductions, actually. Bounding step forward on the landing. And not the disaster that we just saw from Brazil, but not really that good at all. They continue to lose ground here in the final rotation as we go over to floor. Angelina Melnikova from Russia. And then it'll be Simone Biles on floor, on floor to round it out. Russian Federation routine, Angelina Melnikova. That's some upgraded difficulty as well. Full twisting double layout, very, very challenging right off the top. Oh, wow, that was not even close. Landed 
completely out of bounds, both feet. So that's three tenths and plus the, the landing error. She was great in qualifying at the third highest score with a 14.033. I don't think she'll be anywhere near that this time. 13.633 for Grace McCallum. Reboyer over on balance beam now for France. With the struggles of Brazil on bars here in the final rotation, you've got number of countries hoping, thinking they can maybe capture that last spot on the podium. France was fourth after the third rotation. Really critical combination right here. A round off and she'll try to do a laid out somersault, keep her body completely stretched and that was excellent. They will give that connection on that last skill, but she is certainly going for this. Round off to a double pipe, leg straight. Really nice routine, really nice job for her. Back in Rio, she was just a little more than a point off the score of Simone Biles on uh, beam. Came in fourth. The Boyer trying to take plants to the podium. Well, she delivered. I'll tell you, they needed it, that's for sure. And she was tremendous. Sariva 12 4 6, six. So, at least in the moment, all the way down at 7 for Brazil. I think the sub 13. That is a, a very disappointing score for her and Russia. She's a point better. Is there anything that makes you smile in gymnastics and shake your head at the same time more than a floor routine from Simone Butts? <laughs> Not really. I mean, you, I know you could say it about every apparatus, but for Report me, especially on floor. I know, you know, Yul Moldauer, who was part of the U.S. team that fell short, got fourth in the team competition, did a great job. He is a world medalist last year, and he says, when I watch Simone, I am embarrassed to do floor. <laughs> Off the charts, difficult right here. Double, double, laid out. And we have seen that before. <laughs> she kind of makes a face there. Just too much power. Both feet out, three tenths plus a three tenth hop.
end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See the end because it's a done deal. World champions again. Absolutely. Smile and a shake of the head from the Russian men's team. Yeah, absolutely. They, all of them wish they could tumble like yeah. Simone Biles. Just ridiculous. She had a stratospheric 15.333 in qualifying. That first tumbling run, though, I don't know, probably will make that score not possible. Look at the power, though, and just bounce off the floor. I mean, it's these skills are so difficult. That, of course, called the Biles. Hey, you know what I'm wondering, though? You know, she started off on vault, <laughs> mimicking the choreography. See? But she started off on vault and didn't do her harder vault, and she just hasn't looked quite as sharp, All this, although this was razor sharp right there. I'm wondering if maybe she's not feeling quite as good. Remember, she has this kidney stone that she is dealing with. Yeah, I mean, you can't uh, overstate that. Anybody who's ever dealt with that, how painful that can't be. Rebecca Andrade from Brazil. Last one to go here on bars. She's great here. 14, two plus in the qualifying. Just got to make it happen. A lot of things done in combination. Beautiful. Oh. Oh, my uh, gosh. Oh. And again for Brazil. Hmm. Nearly the same type of error. She didn't even try to do the extra half turn. And it's devastating. As you can see, she's she's really very good on bars. A lot of difficult things done in combination. That's too bad. So unfortunate. They had a chance to win a medal for the first time in history. But you have to think this gives them a little bit of confidence going into these next few years, just knowing that yeah. they are capable of being up there. Yeah, they, they had that third spot, but they're not going to grab that. And, you know, I mentioned how close it was after the third rotation. The U.S. is going to win this, but you've got Russia right behind. you got China probably going to win that bronze medal and move all the way up to the seven down to the third. With Canada in the mix, and France going to come up just short, I believe, away from the official. So we wait on that number and the number for Simone Biles on floor as the U.S. is already celebrating. There it is, 14766. And I'll tell you what, with Simone's two errors today, that, uh, I, that doesn't bode well for the competition, her competitors from here on out in the all around in the event finals because she is so tough on herself she'll come back even stronger not not perfect in winning that easily as well reckon up those numbers so the final standings it is china grabbing that bronze medal one of the three spots already at the olympics the u.s wins again in the women's team final russia occupies the second spot and china edges out canada it was so close going into the final rotation france rounding out the top five but I tell you what, a fourth place for Canada, that is a very big deal for them. So, yesterday we had the men's team final, today the women's, and we look ahead. Back with you tomorrow for the men's all-around. Five-time U.S. champ Sam McCulloch competing for his first individual world medal, 9 Eastern on Olympic Channel. Home of Team USA, Tim and Nasty, I'm Terry Gannon. See you then with the action from Doha.